Pretty sure they won't mind us doing the ice. We'll do another ice run. Okay. Like two hours. Yep. Nope. No, when it deals with the yuppies, they're sadly stealing, right? Now. Sadly, yuppies give yeah. it all up. And they usually get all their tickets right enough. And the 51% margin, you know, it gets hit. Sadly, like, uh, like with train, they had probable cause for assault your jobs. Like, you can't fuck that one up. Yeah. But, uh, man, I can't wait to share this mustache. Decided to, it's gone on too far. Yeah. <laughs> it's really funny, though. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to be the not seeing your mouth is kind of funny. <laughs> I wanted to go for the bad name. Superman. <coughs> oh man, I got fucking court tomorrow. What time? Is it? Seven four three p.m. Normal amount of tickets for like just a couple people to have. All of them the same thing drop, come out fuck handling, <laughs> like they don't even have the right words. Are they, fuck? they don't use master statues, not once. Wow. Yeah, it looks like a fucking loser race. Bunch of fucking 36 guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to go losers. Alright, man. 
You know, I don't want to actually like commit to this thing because I know the day I do is I'm just dying. You know, I'd be heartbroken. In the meantime, I'm a, I'm actually literally getting kind of out of it. My old laptop, my desktop, yeah, everything. Portable computer, computer better than what it I really have. is. Truly prices, and I mean the two for the pie bowl between. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there's other people who have ruined it for the masses. So that's not a legally admissible phrase. This, this is private property. property, and so I'm telling you that you can't be here. If you want me, I can trespass you. Brian had the manager. Yeah, we were about to get okay. milk okay. as we set okay. up, ma'am. I'm just telling you that the manager told me unless you're actively eating here, you can't be at the benches. Okay? So it's just an out of order thing. Usually people buy it beforehand. Okay. Do you want to argue with me or would no, you like I'm not me to talk arguing. to Brian? I was literally saying, I, talk to Brian I was about to buy milk. To this is seriously lynch, okay. Will. Right. I can't believe this. Well, you're retaliating you against me. Do you remember me? You're retaliating no, against you were actually me. A business business for me. I was about to buy milk. Do you, do you remember me? You're disengaged right no. now. Okay. Well, then you guys... Okay. I'm if serious. You guys don't buy this is a level one. It's level not a level one. two There's or three right one. now. If Thank you me. don't go in the store and purchase milk, I'm going to trespass you from the property. Wow, this is seriously illegal. And then illegal. you have to drink Are milk here. Are you a registered agent of Safeway? Give me your 20, uh, me your 20 am, right I now. Have Brian, I'll buy manager, the milk, which our Brian, meal was for. Brian, the manager has given me authority to trespass you. So if you go buy milk, you have to drink it You're not an employee of, of Safeway. Okay, though. you know what? I'm going to trespass you. You guys need to leave now. Wow. I was asking a question. You've got to leave milk. now. I'm, I'm asking buying you a question because if you're not an employee of them, then you have no authority to trespass them. I'm trespassing you. That so, you have le legally yeah, no authority. Brian has you guys are missing authority. one level. If we were right, to go to court will, on a trespassing I'll charge, go, okay, it ahead. would it would go nowhere. You want to write your ticket? We'll go to court. Retaliation. You are. I would appreciate the opportunity. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll write your ticket. Thank you. Then you guys need to leave because you're not leaving. Do you have your IDs? Um. Uh. Yes. I don't have an ID. I can just give you my information. Okay. That's fine. All right. You guys take it. I, I'm not whoa, I was never to refusing leave. to leave. We were okay. packing up uh, our That is a said, very that's retaliation. You, you that's retaliation. You didn't even let me buy me milk. Okay, go buy milk. But I'm telling you. No, you told me to leave. You can't go back on that. You so told me to leave. I can't get my milk, so I'm leaving. Because I was telling you what the, what the rules are, and you started arguing with me. That's not okay. arguing. Um, that's yes, exercising my rights. I was telling you right. I was buying milk. Okay, go this is buy milk. Okay, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what Don't David is doing, but uh, all I can tell you guys is that I was asking you if you were registered agent I, to this company. I am. And Brian, the manager, has given me authority to trespass you from the property. 
He has told me to do drive-bys through this area and to look for okay. people who are not actively eating Safeway milk or Safeway food at this location. That is so at the very moment we don't have uh, yes. property that's a trespassing order, yes. even though we just entered the property to go buy well, groceries within a 15-minute period? She just told you. That's hey, not okay. a trespass. That, Sorry, no, no, it's okay. It's, um, and I'll talk to Brian. Yeah, yes, it's seriously. okay. It's fine. Oh, yeah. You guys do okay. things the way you, you guys, feel you, you guys need guys to do them. Right now, um, then you told me not to. I was trying to leave. Okay, then leave. That's what I was okay. doing. All right. We're going to get back in there. Because no. they told me to leave. I can't no. buy milk. You're given the option. Do you want to go buy food or not? You said we're going to go buy milk. Okay, go buy milk. And you said you were an here. agent. You told me to leave. She said and half an you hour. Started asking, you started asking me if I was an agent and arguing with my authority to trespass you. Pretty simple. It was. I was just Actually, I was not arguing with any authority. I was letting you know that I don't appreciate so being approached. That I didn't buy arguing. my milk yeah. yet. I didn't buy my Your milk yet. Is arguing. I didn't buy it. No, it's not. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't it's appreciate being yeah. harassed. Well, I don't think I'm harassing you. I'm telling you the manager's asked me. There's He's something that you guys need to understand. People. Sure. That legally, like in a court of law, you guys may think you have some sort of um, this is, authority this is, that, yeah. like you've worked with with the city. Well, they may not have not actually had its due process in the actual courtrooms, and so an okay. actual like uh, like trespassing charge of like you know someone refusing to leave uh -huh. has requires them to be told personally by an employee or registered agent. That's of the what company. We are. That's what we are. And an extension. If you guys, okay, so if you guys have something written down yeah, we on, and, uh, and it's notarized from Brian, the manager. Yes, we and do. you guys, and, and uh, he has asked me to come through here. And you guys have had this actually uh, yeah. tested and due processed in court. Well, well, I'm happy to test like, in court the next time I see you here. I'll write you a ticket. And I'm happy to go to court with you. Well, no, that's what we're asking right now. I'm, is, asked, uh, I'm happy to write you a ticket next time I see you here violating the rules that I've just told you, and then we'll see you in court. So the rule is buy food first before you, you sit and down. You, in order to be right here, you have to be consuming Safeway food and a half an hour is what they're, they're saying, a half an hour. It's general. Anything long, no, this Wait, is their private property. property. Oh, I understand yeah, that. I'm just saying in general. This is their private property. Oh, yeah, no, that's that their policy. Yeah, that's why we people do it need to talk no, usually to them. That's why the law usually requires somebody, an employee or a manager or an owner of a business. Police have never had any authority unless they actually had something like a trespassing, formal order slash exclusionary order agreement with the city. And it would have to be a massive agreement. It would have to be something that would be like from the top down. And so if you guys are saying that you have some sort of employment with the city, uh, or sorry, um, here's, okay. <clears throat> okay, okay, so you guys are not employed by Safeway. The managers asked us to do this. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, that's, that's, okay, that's it. Yeah, exactly. Let me just let you guys understand where we're coming from. Yeah, let me just understand where you guys are. Where well, we're coming actually, from. We tell we're pro se attorneys, and this okay. is really so, illegal. Because what you're managers doing. and um, people don't dare confront people and tell them to leave because they get yelled at and screamed at and threatened. Yeah. So they ask us to do it. And like I said, I don't think you guys, I think you, I, I've talked to you guys before. You guys were witnesses to a crash for me because you guys were flying a sign on South Hover. You guys were actually very helpful to I me. Believe we're so I, I'm not interested in discriminating against you at all. I, I like you guys, actually. You guys helped me out a lot. You were great witnesses for me. Okay, so... You were um, very helpful. So I, I am yeah. nothing against you. I'm telling you what the manager told me. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, w what we're disagreeing with is a matter of policy but in which you guys may be actually violating actual you, state law and so we're going to have to go with whatever you want to okay. say for now so we don't get obstruction or anything but what we're letting you guys know is if I can't, I never got a chance to get my word is that based upon the case law that we have read that well, we have that you cannot be doing things for Safeway mm. on your public Dying. Well, our, our as long mob police officers using taxpayer dollars paying for your services right now, mm -hmm. you are executing some private entity's formal warning execution process 
which a private company has nothing to do with the public. And <clears throat> we've seen this before with Walmart. Okay. All right, we're done. And there yeah, is we'll an actual we're, document we're, that we'll get okay. to you so that you guys can understand that that's, you're breaking okay. the law right now. Okay, let's. And so, go if you guys are giving us our. Like, uh, so, so, uh, I, so we need to understand definitions just because things are not um, very clear here. They're sitting on their property and they've told us that they don't want people in this area who are not Safeway customers eating their food at the picnic tables. Every single person is not going to automatically buy their groceries first. You can't okay, inform well, millions So what we're asking is, is if you guys are uh, so trespassing us, giving groceries. us some sort of a private property exclusionary are order. Buy, are you going to go buy food? That was the, literally what we okay. were about to do, yes. Yeah. Go for it, go for it. So, no, it's 30 minutes, Will. That's not enough time. And then, no, if that's what the policy is, and if that's what you guys were requiring us to do, based upon when you saw us arrive and when you decided to tell us, and you, and you decided to make your judgment call, we'll take it. We'll just, uh, uh, we just want to know if we are trespassed from the property permanently, yeah, this, if we this, can come back. If you're going to, and buying food, you're fine. I was simply telling you what the, the rules were. And what the manager okay, had yeah, exactly. Us. And, and based okay, upon that, our, it, and, you know. And so far, this has turned into a big yeah. confrontation. And all I well, would it's more like. Con a, the only contention was. Is, this yours? is I is have. This, I, can, I can throw it away for you. No, it's okay. I okay. have set up shop before I buy my stuff every time. It's a cultural preference. I go shopping after I set up. And basically, your policy just, just totally was. Uh, it's weird to have a police officer in a form because usually it's a private entity. Well, yeah, they're, they're tired of it because the, the liquor store brings a lot of people here that are undesirable. People are sitting on their benches. Well, did, did you guys come out asking questions about so how asked, long we were going to be here for? Or did it sound like it was already a, you have to go? Does it sound like you have to go? No, no, The we'll thing is, is if you don't have stuff immediately, they're allowed to approach. Like I said. I set up my stuff first. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so, no, it's okay, cool. It's cool. It's a but, um, overlap. But look, okay, yeah, we're, we're just. Uh, we'll get our stuff out here. Anyway. Because no, we'll, no, we're, we'll, uh, we'll we'll take it and we'll we'll do. You know, we'll have to take our kind of move along. We'll call it. You know, if we can't physically do this within, general, you know, stiff, thirty more minutes. You if you guys are exercising uh, some sort of authority that you otherwise would physically trespass us or get us a trespassing charge right now, if we didn't stop doing this. If you want to go buy stuff, buy stuff. So here. We're, well, what we're saying is, is that we still consider our rights to be somewhere infringed in here, based upon the employment status of you guys versus Safeway. So if you're not, if you're still not employees, we still feel like this is some, some uh, uh, so kind of policy where they have to do their jobs themselves. They literally have to. They, okay. they literally, unless they set up something. And uh, what I'm saying is, based upon what you guys have told me so far, I don't know what you guys have set up. And so. Um, it's very hard, difficult because I've seen situations in law that have actually failed where cops actually thought that things were set up and they weren't. Well, I've already said that. You know, and so, like, with, and so, person, so what I'm telling you is that per people require, in order for probable cause for trespassing, a personal formal warning given to them from an owner or manager of a business. Someone that has some physical tie that has, you know, and, and to the I business. Have that relationship with Brian and, and so, um, what we're saying is, is if you are detaining us. Or something to give us a formal order to, you know, exclusion or some trespass warning or something like that that we've gotten in the past. We've been detained to be given a private property trespass warning yeah. on public dime. That's so illegal. We read that in the case law. That's like we're gonna sue people over that. Like we've had our rights infringed like this before. False imprisonment is a really serious thing. That's that's a very big bad technical glitch. And so, like this is really bad. We don't know. We. What, so far, what we've been issued in a different place in this city by Longmont Police failed the basic tests of we weren't being detained for reasonable suspicion for a crime, and we weren't being detained with probable cause to be written a charge of trespassing, and we had been written, we had been detained to be written some sort of private property formal warning trespassing exclusionary order. Okay. They required our identity for that. Yeah. And that was nothing to do with the cop doing his investigation or a cop charging me and arresting me or not just totally arrest, writing me a ticket. So why are, are cops detaining people to do private companies' jobs? It's super illegal. Yeah. No, like the case law is literally like not like I got to get you this one document that, that, that literally right sums it up because it's, it's, like it's really old. And people are actually having to case law things 
because they're stat fronted. And so these things have already been dealt with. And so we've been having to deal with a lot of uh, issues where cops believe that they're on like a level one when they're actually like screwing up on like a level zero. And like, like for instance, Dave and I were on a private drive the other day in Boulder that another officer had explained to us as well. We use maps and plots too and we read statutes. And so we were on that private drive uh, standing there with signs and uh, police showed up and said, you're on a median. And we immediately said, that's a private drive. Like we've read the statutes and uh, you know, whatever you say is not gonna work. And they're like, it's a median more than 30 feet. In fact, I talked to the sergeant later and she had to kind of ratify through and tell me, nope, that's a city street. And I looked at the sign and it said private drive, but it still said city street. And it's like, she said that to me, like literally to my face, that it was a city street. And so to, to sum it up real quick, all you have to do is call in as like an anti-abortionist, as like a sting. And so what we do is we prove that there's a ghost protocol. And so I called in to Boulder police and I actually got something uh, of a situation where, um, the officer there on the, on the phone was like, um, you know, uh, uh, when you, uh, okay, so I'm calling in. Did you I'm saying, no, he knows what you can't do. So. Yeah, 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 thanks, thanks. I really got to explain this because this is, okay. it's really short and sweet. But basically, um, when I explained to this officer that I was this anti-abortionist, I looked up laws ahead of time, I explained, hey, do you have a median statute just like Fort Collins? And uh, does it apply to private drives? No, of course not, because that's your right to freedom of speech. And if you, you know, you have to get permission from the owner, if, but not necessarily because you have a formal warning process that if you're out there and no one ever says anything, you have to be informed by somebody. And so these were private drives that were not attended by anybody. And, uh, um, uh, other officers had actually told us about them as well. We go online, see the Boulder County, City County uh, maps and plans. It's very basic stuff. It's a private drive. It's 29th Street Mall. It's there on 28th Street and Walnut. And so these other officers show up and they're like, nope, panhandling. Ask them for the statute. They won't even tell me the statute. They don't even know. And then they, so they had to look it up later. And then of course it's now median. And then before you know it, it's like, you know, uh, median's on private drives now. What do you know? Let's ratify to pick these people up because we caught them red-handed because we've actually had to deal with private drives in Westminster, 9400, private drives in North Glen, uh, Marketplace, and private drives in Federal Heights, a little safe right there. Because cops are literally trying to do their jobs with like zero tools, not going through elements or maps or statutes, and literally thinking when they have somebody that guns blazing, let's start writing statutes. So, I kid you not, we've been detained 30 times. All, every single time, tickets dropped. And every time we have maps and plaques ahead of time to literally say, hey guys, this is stupid. Sometimes we're so bored of it, we sting them with fake charges. Like, you know, being stopped for not having a receipt at Walmart. You know, like I got arrested for shoplifting at a Walmart leaving it because I didn't show them a receipt. They got profiled. And then once they wrote this to you, uh, when you uh, don't do an investigation correctly, it's guilty until proven innocent. And basically, if, if you actually are a bad cop and you actually have someone on nothing, but you think like you can trust information, like the two employees had come back and said, yeah, he took the cheese. When they didn't look at it either, they looked at nothing. I paid for this cheese, I'm, you know? You and so, paid for the cheese? yeah, I totally walked out. Uh, and uh, no, they, Whatever they said they had or they had of me taking it was what they came back and told the cop while he was detaining me. They went and looked for this video footage. They came back really quick. They said to me that I took the cheese and arrested me, took me back to the store and wrote me a ticket and everything. Right after they wrote me the ticket, showed him a receipt. Because it's guilty until proven innocent. So it was a bad profile that Walmart's been setting up and uh, they try and ratify about everyone else trying to show receipts. Hey man, if you just show it, man, you're, you know, you're fighting the man, why not? You know, if you have nothing to hide, right? Well, the whole system is turning into this guilty until proven innocent where uh, instead of when actually doing a, a real ticket, investigation. When you get a ticket, is that immediately meaning you're guilty? That's a, uh, well, you have to at least have probable cause. Bare minimum. You have to have some sort of bare minimum articulable elements. So what, what's probable cause? So, 
uh, totality of the circumstances. It's uh, based upon uh, all the facts and circumstances available to them at the time, and they can't be like what, reasonably what, mistaken. What, what, what would be those? Uh, like, let's put it this way. It's, it's, all, it's a lot easier to explain it on a case-by-case -case basis. Sure. And so in this case, uh, two employees telling you that they took cheese, that I took this cheese, that's not articulatable. Have you? What are you going to show to the DA? What's your evidence? That's literally hearsay. No, that's literally hearsay. Because when they, well, if you were a good cop, you would do an investigation. You'd ask, so what, what, what did you, uh, how did you say this? We have video footage. Okay, can I go see the video footage? We, you would literally trust them where, where instead of at, looking at the video footage yourself? Where, would you, where were you at when you saw them take the cheese? I was exiting. No, no, I'm telling you what I would ask about. Could they have seen you take the cheese? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, Thank you. Wanna, follow you wanna, me. Exactly. You see, yeah, you want to see. Yeah. Could they have seen it? Yeah, they didn't and do any of that investigation on? whatsoever. They literally so, put poop so together. So detain somebody, what do you have to have to detain somebody? Reasonable suspicion. Go. It's got to so be what, articulate what, too. What's reasonable suspicion on... If, if, say, somebody comes walking out of Safeway right now and an employee comes running out and says, he just stole, you know, five steaks, is that a reasonable suspicion for me to stop that guy and detain him? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. So, a person walking out of Walmart, hey, that person didn't want to show their receipt. Are you literally going to detain every single person now that's going to walk out of a Walmart that is not showing a receipt? I have yet to get a call from Walmart. Walmart doesn't not call like that. Yeah. If somebody doesn't show a receipt, they don't, they don't call us on those. Exactly. It's actually their so what, policy what not to do. detain people either. What they do is if they think somebody didn't steal anything, somebody didn't pay for something, then they'll let their loss prevention know, and then they'll go through and look at their video surveillance and back exactly. it up. Exactly. That's what didn't happen. That None of that happened. You guys are talking about how your objectively reasonable cop would do things differently. That's you guys. Exactly. That's what we're saying. What I'm saying is that we keep catching non-objectively reasonable cops doing things with no probable cause, no arguable probable cause. Literally picking people up on ba negative statutes, backward statutes, meaning they actually, I've, I've made them make up statutes, like uh, picking me up on private property to get out of that they didn't know that they were picking me up on public pro property. Uh, that, uh, we'll explain that in a second. Okay. Let's put it this way. I literally have caught every single one of them on, you on tape. Every single one of them. I, there's 30 of them. I'm trying to get them on YouTube as fast as I can. I kid you not. I've already won all the cases. Uh, time to go to 42 USC court. Seriously, if you guys want to go through the cheese experience, you can see how a bad cop it argues that, uh, since I didn't show a receipt, I got nothing to hide, right? And I just got detained there while they did some fake investigation with some private company and then profiled. Private company? Yeah, Walmart. Walmart has some private property receipt checking policy where they themselves are instructed not to detain you if you don't show a receipt. But then a cop was there, Commerce City cop, happened to just be posted up, just doing nothing, basically. And it's like, dude, I break so case he law. Was there, and you were walking out. And I was walking out, and, and as and they didn't want to show somebody receipt. Yeah, and okay. so did did they did they? Bam! Right point. there, you wanted to detain me. He detained me right there. They, they didn't even have a time to but even did, ask me for a receipt. Did, he had already detained me. I you swear. Don't think that that was reasonable suspicion, though. Sure, for a second to ask, hey man, what are you doing? Uh, not showing a receipt, but then what are you going to do after that? You can't hold them for some private property. If Waiting for me to show a receipt, now I'm guilty if, if until proven reason, innocent. If there's and now, suspicion that you've committed, have committed, or about to commit a crime, then they can detain you yeah. for a reasonable amount of time to determine whether or not a crime was committed, or you had, or you were preparing to commit. Exactly, which in this case them? would be shoplifting. Yeah. So, so how long did they, what did they do to you? They detained me for as long as it took them to go have two private property employees go look at some video footage. Okay. Which was like 10, 15 minutes maybe. For, and did the video footage show you purchasing the cheese? Whatever they came back and told him, because he was there detaining me the whole time, he didn't do his own investigation. They said I took the cheese. Well, I never saw any video footage. The cop never saw any video footage. He arrested me on the spot, right in the exit. Did he arrest you or did he write you a ticket? Physically arrested me, took me to the back of the store, non-custodial arrest, small amount, of, so okay, no so jail. Was, I was going to say, it sounds like a petty crime. Yeah. yeah, but still, here we are detaining over a private property, arresting over he did it, and like no evidence for court. Literally, hearsay. That is not where you start your job. You literally what, what can't put it. What happened with the ticket? Uh, oh man, 
I uh, I showed the receipt to him as I was exiting. Oh man, they wanted it back. He tried to ask for his ticket back. He tried to re-detain me over it. And so I let them see the receipt to uh, exonerate me while I'm calling in their boss. So their boss shows up and I talk to them, try and explain the entire thing to him. He has to write up an entire report. Um, the next day, by the way, they escorted us off Walmart property with some formal warning exclusionary order from some employee or manager or owner from Walmart saying, yeah, man, this guy told us to remove you. And it's like, dude, no one's told me anything. No employee from the company has told me anything. And so I kept asking him, are they employees of the company? Do you have any uh, official association with this company whatsoever? No, 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 of course not. We're just cops. Well, then why are you telling me that I have to be removed from this property? You're not Walmart. And so that was the second day. You can see it all on YouTube, guys. It's retarded. So the whole point is, is yeah, they literally you had to. Did you do it right there? Yeah, right there. It was kind of stupid, you know. So, anyways, I gotta leave you with this one. No, yeah, this is the biggest one. I like this one. This one is the scariest one, and this is truly speaking why we have to stop these kinds of situations. This is the worst profile ever. Okay, so in, in Fort Collins, there's a homeless hate crime problem going on. There's a what? A homeless hate crime problem. Just um, homelessness, lynching. A hate crime? Yeah, hate crimes. Seriously? So a hate crime is just something that uh, somebody does statutorily. It's got to be a statute. Mm -hmm. So like harassment or theft or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's got to be bias motivated. And so if it's not a statute, it could be like hate speech, but, you know, that's protected to an extent. Blah, blah, blah. But are people really so. homeless? Because homeless is where the heart is. True. That's what I, I look yeah. at. I mean, it's a, it's a definition might, thing. Yeah, Absolutely. I think it's a definition. I think uh, transient or maybe just... Uh, free wandering is a better word. I, I don't okay. know. Homeless seems so. We'll put it this way. I had a homeless person tell me that once. They said, I'm not homeless. I got my yeah. heart. I got my home right here. You know, and let's put it this way. Instead of what it is, let's say what it's possibly not. Everyone likes to identify the transients are not homeless, right? Yeah. Don't you guys don't like transient calls? I mean, do you guys not like getting calls from a certain demographic that are on a, the streets doing illegal things that you would otherwise potentially identify with the word transient? Nope. Okay, well, Anybody Longmont is problems, uh, I, a I, little I, bit different from Fort Collins, yeah, Denver, and okay. the other seven jurisdictions we have had to deal with, but let's put it this way. If there is a custom that would be talked about, it would be this concept of a fourth court of uh, transients out there that are costing the government money in calls. Okay, so up in Fort Collins, there's this east side of Safeway there on College of Mulberry. And it's a, there's, on the, it's a hangout spot on the east side of Safeway. It's a bench area. Okay, gotcha. And uh, a lot of homeless people tend to hang out there and possibly get drunk, uh, you know, smoke, pot, smoke so all sorts of yeah. tickets that are going to be written there, of course. <laughs> yeah, you know, you got to take calls. And so... Uh, uh, this was a hot spot for the city, especially with the summertime, the transient population, or the uh, you know traveler population coming in the summertime, and uh, a lot more drinkers and so forth. So basically, uh, the business owner decided to put up a fence around this area. To you know, uh, who knows why, but it was just around the bench area, and uh, basically, nobody does anything about this for like two, three, four weeks. And uh, my brother and I, from our previous experience dealing with right-of-way law issues, where people don't know the right-of-way, cops and other people, it's just real basic stuff you can go online, like you can look at plats, maps, shit like that. Uh, turns out we had gone, and we, we already had, you know, relations with the city, so we talked to their chief construction inspector, uh, Robert Mosby, find out it's a illegal fence, it didn't have a permit, it's because it's in the right-of-way without a permit. We kind of looked at the maps, counted to 100 with our feet, realized it's really basic, it's a 100 foot right away. You know, it's this public street. And so, just because it wasn't a street or a sidewalk, it was kind of like the landscaping on the side of the building between the property and the street. It was a bench area. But of course, real quick, by the way, this bench area has an illegal sign above it that we've talked to the city many times, no one wants to take it down. It says, no loitering, police enforced. So that confuses everybody into thinking it might be private property, so on. But if you know your maps, flats, statues, you'll never be fooled in a million years. And so they send a takedown notice for this illegal fence. I find out through this email chain that's going on between the city and them that it was a temporary safety precaution that they had put it up again for because uh, they were sick and tired of getting the calls and the needles and so forth. And so it was all caught on email. You can saw on YouTube right now, I just got it up. And so um, uh, they put up this fence without a permit, 
We got the takedown notice sent. It was really easy. They, you know, this minor amendment process, which they were, it turns out, they were trying to fill it up with rocks later on, has like a six month process to it. They hadn't even started it. And it's all public minor amendment stuff because you have to obviously ask the city to transform this land, it's just public land, back into not private property, but just amend it to throw some rocks in it to hide the fucking homes. No, oh, sorry. So, okay. real quick. Jeez, okay, there's some racism out there. <laughs> so, uh, from here though, I swear though, this is where it gets nitty gritty. I get a copy of the takedown notice. It's real basic. It said, hey man, uh, you know, you gotta take down this set fence. It's in, within the right of way. You got 10 days. Uh, it's an encroachment for city code. And if you go look at the code, it's a 2384 violation. It says it's a municipal code misdemeanor for every day that it's up because it's against the code for whatever reason. It was too short to all, in this case, not even applied for. And so I got this taken out as copy. And what do you know? I decided to jump this fence in the middle of the night in front of these cops that happened to be writing this other guy a trespassing ticket for whatever reason, you know, uh, a different property. But since I happened to be present, I had been fishing the whole day for cops to see if they might do this. My brother and I already ate lunch on the other side of it with cops during the day. No one drove by, or no uh, cops drove by, no one did anything. But of course, when I jump it at night, we were, you know, I'm not saying that I'm trying to purposely get a ticket here, but I'm trying to see if a cop is literally stupid enough to write me a trespass. Sure enough, I jump the fence. They don't say anything. I'm all immediately, yeah, this is a 100 foot right of way, guys. It's a, you know, go talk to your city about it. it uh, you know, it's a fence without a permit. Uh, you're, we're catching up on the information. They're all super, super quiet about it. And that's when it got super serious. They're asking for my ID, and now I'm obstructing because I won't tell them my name right away. But I had this email. So I try to explain to them that. My brother, across the street, a man, has a copy of this, which I just didn't happen to have on me at the time. So he goes ahead and uh, they all go uh, see this email. They immediately say, forged. And then they pass it off and they're like, formatting's not right. And they basically just, <laughs> they complaint busted. They didn't even read it. And in the report, they, one guy even said, I didn't have, I didn't even read it. And because they couldn't get out of it, because they have to do this one-way investigation, because they think they got someone guilty and they don't want to possibly exonerate him. And so you have to do real investigations in the streets. You have to possibly use exculpatory information to not charge somebody once you find that you, he's not guilty of anything. But of course, these people picked me up off of literally nothing, thinking that uh, it's some sort of private, they literally said private property trespassing, the warrantless arrest affidavit. Didn't mention the email in the warrantless arrest affidavit, so judge doesn't even see anything about that. Never mentions anything about me and saying right away or anything. In fact, lied and said that I was only talking about Safeway and some sort of private property. So they covered up the entire thing. And so it was a sting to see if a cop would be literally that stupid to pick me up off of fake charges, which now are going nowhere on purpose and they're taking out everyone. The uh, j judge rubber stamped it, the DA rubber stamped it. It's been a year and a half. DA finally said he'd drop it. It's like, I've sent you guys maps and plans. Of course you're gonna drop it. It's not trespassing. And so uh, the whole point is, is uh, you're not supposed to, uh, you know, objectively reasonable cops are supposed to know the law. At least, you know, they're, they're tasked with know, knowing all of governing law. And so there's this stupid excuse of like a big, thick book that some cops use out there. Hey, man, by all means, you know, if you don't want to read the book, whatever, it's your job to. And so the elements of trespassing are either the premises uh, of, uh, well, the, it's the uh, premises and the permission. So obviously they didn't get the premises right. It's public land, not private. They didn't use maps, stats, or anything. Nothing. Everything I told them on the streets, they could have turned around to their vehicle and looked at their patrol vehicle to exonerate me. And then instead they went down some permission thing, which they thought that uh, because the fence is up, business over must not want anyone behind them. Guess what? That's not illegal. There's no, no trespassing sign. And then there's no business owner that they know that I've been interacting with. And there's no formal warning process that they even would have given me like you guys. No, they went straight. Anybody behind that fence? Trespass. And so the whole point is, is that a cop is going to think he's got somebody and we're going to trap him in it if we know it. And then they're going to ratify it to racketeer their way out of it. And they're not going to be able to do it. And it's just going to look really funny because they're going to have really bad arguments. Like this city street is a private drive. That's online right now. You can go see this that your cops are racketeering to get out of literally crimes that we catch them in. And so we're sick and tired of it. And so the fence is sort of still going on. They still think they have at least probable cause. Hmm? Uh, no, they took it down. Okay. No, they put it back up again as an, another illegal fence, as a, a temporary one. And someone had jumped that. And then a cop had moved that. And I was like, dude, that's 2384 violation. There was no permit for that either. 
And so, by the way, I have audio of every single thing from the uh, talking to the city managers to the uh, internal affairs, every single angle, because that's how we had to catch you guys. You know, it's a racket. It's a, it's a really sick, like crimes against humanity kind of thing. We've, we've literally caught it all. You know, we can't, we can't even get it out fast enough. And so, uh, we'll leave you with this. The worst thing ever. Are you ready for this? Security guards. They don't have badges, right? Well, they're civilians. Yeah, they can be off-duty yeah. cops, but not off-duty no, cops. Sometimes they have security badges. They have security, security badges, badges with some security, um, uh, comf- you know, yeah. uh, uh, licensing system I've seen online. Sure, absolutely. But they're not sworn officers unless they're like CSUPD. So in this case, if they're like Denver University, the private security guards, they have like, you know, libraries and stuff, they patrol and that's it. They don't have reasonable suspicion powers, right? To go up and only do detaining for only investigatory things, like what we're talking about, right? They have as they om- much right as you do to detain somebody if you watch somebody commit a crime in front of you. Yep, exactly. So, Citizens arrest, so probable cause that, only. You, you have that kind of authority as well. Yeah, exactly. That's perfect. you see somebody perfect. commit a crime, you can go, you're waiting here. Yep, but you have to witness them commit an actual crime and be willing and ready to turn them right over. And uh, citizens don't have, like, the luxury of probable cause. If we're wrong, then we have a false imprisonment. You know, and so you really got to know what you're doing. But it's obviously, if you're a bar bouncer and you tell someone to leave and refuses to leave, hey, I'm a witness to it. I did it. I or saw him. He didn't do it. you see somebody steal somebody's purse in front of you and you take off and you yeah. tackle them down and hold them down until, yeah, you, you, have, you can do that as a private citizen. Exactly. You have the... the Lawful authority to do that. But as a private citizen, we don't have the power to go do an investigation, detain someone with reasonable suspicion. Hey, let me run your names real quick, to, and then I'll let you go once I feel like you haven't done anything. Because that's exactly what you guys do, right? Yeah, they, that's they only what you guys on do. Reasonable suspicion, though. They have to see. They, yeah, they can't yeah. detain you if they think that you've done something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To just to confirm or dispel. Done. That's yeah. that's not that. That's why there's I Paul Blart. You're supposed to, yeah. to observe and report and then call it, the cops. It's situational, but if you're like, yeah. Yeah, I, I it would, yeah. You saying. wouldn't even, na- well, logically, you wouldn't have at least the power to run their names yourselves. I don't know how to clear their, their, yeah, because to run a name, you usually have to have cop power, right? Well, you like, in to, in at least a database for a certain systems. Yeah, you can go into CBI as a, as yeah. a private citizen, but yeah, you have to pay for the names. Yeah. But the concept of holding somebody while you're running their name, detaining while you're waiting for them to be released, that's something that a cop has to... Are they to... detaining you because you're trespassing? Or are they, what are they detaining for? Purely an investigation. Just, but, there, but there's no trespassing. But there's no trespassing. Okay. See, yeah, exactly. It wouldn't, it, it, I don't know. You would never do that. Security guards don't have that power. Citizens don't have that power. I would never be able to, like, if I... You know, hey, uh, I thought, like, if I saw somebody walk out not showing a receipt, hey, man, uh, I got reasonable suspicion, you know, ask me some questions, uh, or can I ask you some questions? Obviously, a citizen wouldn't do that, right? They can keep walking. And you can yeah, walk exactly. Yeah. Caught DU security guards totally impersonating cops. They actually think they're actually really cops, like, they, like they're unsworn officers. They've been, like, ratified for who knows how many years, 10, 20, 30 years. They literally go around detaining people with reasonable suspicion, and they fooled us into thinking that we were detained by cops because we asked them when we started the conversation, are you a cop? He's like, yeah, I am. He said, yeah, I am. And later on, it was too late by the time we got our IDs released, we drilled down to find out that he's not a cop. No, I, no badge, nothing. Yeah, pretty bad. Worst part is we happened to call in their police because we're trying to report a false imprisonment by a cop impersonator. It's really basic stuff. They have, we happen to call in the police that have been working with them forever. Turns out that they uh, think that's actually how the law works too. And they totally ratified. They didn't have the right definitions for anything. They didn't know what reasonable suspicion was versus probable cause. They thought you had to be detained in cuffs versus not. See, hey, you weren't cuffed. See, see. And so they tried to racketeer their way out of a false imprisonment. And they literally all decided to believe that that was law. And then basically I went up to Internal Affairs. They also believed that was law. OIM, they also thought that was law. D, uh, the DA's office, they also thought that was law. And they all said, hey, man, you're only detained for like five, ten minutes. Come on, it's just a security guy, blah, 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 blah. And it's like... Come on, guys, I have audio of this, which I haven't released yet because I wanted to see if they would actually take the report in the first place, which they never did, so they all buzzed it from the get-go. And what do you know? I finally get 
tired and I call in again, I get a sergeant from internal affairs and I'm like, hey man, does uh, Terry law only apply to cops? And he's like, uh, or, or something to that came like, it, it doesn't apply to security guards. And he's like, yeah, man, it only applies to cops. And I was like, thank you, come on, can you take my freaking complaint now? And so I caught, I finally caught the cop on the inside. But of course he wouldn't, he, you know, buzz, you know, because they can't handle it because it's probably the worst thought ever that there's been a ratified pit of illegal behavior. There's a, there's a jurisdiction out there that the cops think they don't have to patrol because these guys do. And they're out detaining people, wasting their time, literally doing fake investigations. You guys got to listen to it. They detain us over leaving the library at 2 a.m., which is when it closes, with bins, which if you're a security guard, you can ask and you can observe and report and see where we go with these bins. But we had our paperwork in it, and we had a monitor on it. So sure, if you're a cop, that's reasonable suspicion. If you're a security guard, that's not your job. And he actually used the words reasonable suspicion. He thought he knew what it was, and he was a better cop than a cop. Oh, just like a little tote. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like a tote. Oh, a tote. I got you. Yeah. Gotcha. And so, uh, it was funny. I'll finish with this. He was a better cop than most cops with his wording, and that's why he trapped us in a false imprisonment, because when we asked him certain questions, hey, are you a cop? What's your reasonable suspicion? He's like, yeah, this, this, this. And we're like, okay. You know, and so we got falsely imprisoned. It's stupid. We, so we catch all this st stuff all the time. Uh, we can't report fast enough, so we get sort of trained by all these stupid cops on the streets to just go around to the rest of the jurisdictions because uh, we, we know a couple things. If we have rights to hold private, you know, signs on private drives, you know, and things like that, uh, and uh, I sleep outside of parks with maps and stuff like that, and uh, we don't really have much help from our really stupid Mormon, lynchy Mormon family. That, like you we left when we were a long time ago. So we're not really Mormon. No, we're no. But there they are, and so we've tried to report all this to them. <laughs> they won't help us anything. I get what I call myself a recovery. <laughs> Where did you guys grow up? Fort Collins, oh. Colorado, born and raised there. Utah. Ran out of our own town. I'm a Utah Mormon. <laughs> they moved, they moved so from Utah funny. to here right before. Yeah. We were well, born. So basically, we were run out of Fort Collins with the same kind of tickets. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow. No, I, I kid you not. Good luck. Um, yeah. Please look it up Sorry on YouTube. We got ran out of uh, eight jurisdictions. <laughs> There's 50 cops on our list. Um, and you guys might be on it. I don't know. All this right, was a well. very un unusual encounter. Like I said, I don't know. Uh, it, let's put it this way. Like I said, jurisdictions have been caught thinking that they know how a formal warning process works and have literally picked people off, off of what they perceive to be probable cause, which ended up being no probable cause or arguable probable cause, which equaled a big fat ugly 14 USC lawsuit. Okay. Right. Well, I'm tired of this crap. So, well, you know, like, uh, but you guys, we're trying to, we're you know, trying to understand that security guards don't yeah, have the power yeah. to detain. No, so, can you guys go help me? Because it's on YouTube and they're Is entire. It? What is it under uh, YouTube on? Uh, I'm a YouTube just type uh, false arrested by Boulder Police, false arrested by Longmont Police, false arrested by North Glen Police. I simplified it to playlists. It's really stupid. I'm kid I kid you not. I've like a month to put this up before on my last trial, which I'm being framed for citizens arresting a ranger to try and stop him from writing me tickets. Never happened. No. So th these people are basically nigger lynchers. And they're really racist. We have to use that terminology because uh, there's a uh, there's a uh, it's the same thing that happened to the blacks and the previous people and so forth. I don't I don't and so, understand it. Just anyone who looks poor. It's po well, I look poverty. Poor. <laughs> I grew up poor. Five kids. Dad was a postal worker. Mom was a stay-at-home mom. We were on food stamps, and uh, uh, my uh, lunch was paid or was it free or reduced? I grew up poor as a little pauper. Because my well, mom, well, I grew up Mormon, so my mom didn't work. She had to stay home with us. My dad was a postal worker. I don't know why they had five kids if they can't afford them, but we're Mormon. We're Mormon. And we had a small family, too. Do you guys have a small family? <laughs> Seven kids. Five sisters. Boys! But maybe. You know how to treat yeah, the ladies. We're the black, right? the black sheep, I guess, whatever. <laughs> No, but uh, if there's something, maybe you can do an investigation on it, since you have that kind of insight. Okay. Is uh, uh, go online and okay, see Saints and Perez from Westminster. Okay. Really racist. Literally. They picked me up off of a private drive on 9400 in Sheridan. Said it was a public street. And I argued with them in the streets and maps and statues. Didn't get very far. 
and I read them all, and they wouldn't believe me, and it dropped in court instantly, because all I had to do I ask was ask him was on a median, no. Was I like, stepping out, no. Was I located with such that cars can't park? No, you would get picked up by these police officers that were talking about really? tickets. I'm serious. Wow. That's where we... So That's we counted our, 16 Michael? of these no, we tried officially to open and shut the stupid cases. Our, our goal, honestly, is to keep people safe. Um, we're getting intel that there is a guy who's basically raping homeless women. Have you guys heard anything through the grapevine out there? So, anyways, if you hear anything, can you call me? Because sure. so that, yeah, that, yeah, that's my, if that's my goal, is to sure. keep, sure. I want to keep people safe. That, we stopped a burglar in progress on Commerce City, Walmart. Yeah, I mean, we're pro well, right. you guys, No one wants to long. help you us. You guys helped me out with my crash. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. So, not, nice to see you guys again. Like I said, I like you guys. I see you guys standing out and... I like your Careful, because it sounded I like, like you were sign. almost there no, well, detaining us for no. trespassing private property I was just formal warning to explain, order. But I think you guys also like to really see this, and then you think uniform profiling, and that's not what I do. You know, I'm, I I want to keep people safe. I also want to do what you know, what property owners. I'm just telling you, ask me to do because they're, they're, they are having problems on these particular benches. They're getting people smoking crack. In fact, one employee said, I know it's crack because I wasn't a very good kid when I was younger. <laughs> and I didn't have, he, was, he was actually like, I know it was crack. So, so, and then like drug deals and stuff. So I, simply I was just trying to inform you is all. I like you guys. Yeah. And I you like your don't. sign that change. I like your sign when you stand there at the corner of uh, Camp Pratt and Nelson, you say change comes in many forms. Many forms. I love that. I do. The only reason I why we ended up on that meeting was because we were human trafficked off of 10, 15 other ones in uh, or the other seven jurisdictions in Denver. Um, you can go online and watch now. Okay. It's really bad. Well, I, I, so. don't, I definitely don't want it to be bad, and I want you guys to enjoy whenever you're here, okay? Well, uh... You I'll look me? into this uh, relationship that you guys have. Uh, I'll forward you a document you that nice literally says, well, generally speaking, uh, anytime you're doing something on public dime that involves like private dollars, yeah, yeah. is okay. a really okay. big, okay. big, well, big that, and you, you have my card, right? Yeah. That would be great if you did forward that to me. Because yeah. uh, I mean, uh, let's put this way. Um, most other jurisdictions ended up having to forego those policies well, because they were illegal. Well, I'm interested, so let me you know. know. Cause it's the you're a smart cause, little cookie. Because I mean, you guys are doing private. Because like, are they paying you, and are is the city paying Safeway? I mean, the city is basically. One of our children. <laughs> yeah. you know, I, if I were a resident of Safeway, uh, I would not want my taxpayer dollars going toward some private entity formal warning process. Okay. It's like really uh, based upon this one document that is in, out of Florida. Let's put it this way, it was uh, a, a already beaten a, a dead horse and it came up again like a couple of years ago and so they wrote another document about it and it just further clarifies that you gotta get a formal warning from the business owner. It's gotta be an actual uh, You're agent. right, and it has to have an agent and yeah. the person you have and to so, have the name of the person. Uh, if you guys <laughs> took off your badge all of a sudden and became that agent, sure. If you guys are on the Can clock the entire off? time, this is really uncomfortable. that is what we're saying is like head. super duper illegal. You, you shouldn't be... You know, it's like I said, uh, up on Walmart, by the way, or up on YouTube, is being detained over on McDonald's after being asked to, to leave, which he, my brother was never actually personally, formally warned to leave. Mm -hmm. They call the cops up, tell us, or tell the cops that we refuse to leave, which we have the audio of the entire event because we were recording beforehand, it just happened to be like wherever we go now, literally on. And so uh, we uh, showed the proof that someone falsified information to authorities, and now they uh, uh, arrested, detained, whatever you want to call it, us, this private property formal warning exclusionary order ticket. It wasn't a ticket. It just said, you cannot come back for management. We asked, are we being cited for trespassing? Do we refuse to leave? No, no, no. Uh, but are we under investigation for refusing to leave or anything like that? No, no, no. We're just doing this thing for a private business. And it's like you literally just detained me and got my name for something that you technically don't even need. Because the business owner, next time they see us personally, they can call the cops and say, I saw him. Because that's how informal warnings usually work. You don't need databases. You guys have a false database right now of 
tickets that are being looked at as muni warnings, muni warnings. We warned them, it's a trespass warning. And so that uh, complication of words where it gets confused, confusing is where all of our lawsuit happens is because people have the wrong definition of words. They think they know the law, they go out there and they execute the law uh, they, and they get it wrong. And they think we can detain off of a trespassing warning. And it's like, no, or a security guard, we can detain, but it's a private property. It's our power, it's secure, you know, it's reasonable suspicion. And so we're just catching a whole bunch of stupid yuppies who think they know the law, who go out guns well, blazing. I don't know what they're all yuppies. You know. Yuppie to me is like a really rich person that doesn't have to work for That's a yuppie. Yeah, well, they've <laughs> infiltrated. Oh, man, you literally just explained <laughs> all of the, the cops in our lawsuit, all the cops out there that didn't want to do their jobs. They literally wanted to pick us up off at nothing. And so there are probably some other types of cops out there. We haven't met too many of them. Please, you guys would be able to open up the largest investigation on yourselves ever. All of my internal affairs documents are going up there too. They literally won't take my complaints because it it's not written down and I keep telling your internal affairs process says that it's to accept verbal complaints. I'm behind on all my paperwork. Can you keep accepting them? So all I have now is just leave voicemails until I can get them the paperwork. Because no one wants to touch it because it's the end. Yeah, we caught you guys. So Good please work. stop can detaining board, people can illegally. Board, can you forward that to me? Uh, yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. This is, I'm, I'm not joking. It's, it's a really easy to find document. You could Google it yourself. It's really easy. It's a, it's, it's an old thing and it's in the case law. We keep seeing jurisdiction pop up with shit that's not on the books. So this is really not cool, but thanks. We would have appreciated a conversation with the per private property business owner. That's all. Thank you. We, uh, Oh, oh yeah, yeah, real quick, real quick. We caught uh, King Supers closing down their lobby in the name of too many homeless calls, which we got all the angles there. When you go back and ask them again, they'll say, no, it's just closed and things like that. And so that happened to be the fourth. The lobby? Uh, the Starbucks looking lobby, which is just King Supers property. Oh, I got you, got you, got you. It's not Starbucks. And it's been over the last couple of years closing down at nights. And so it's discrimination against them and also taking away everyone else's night use rights, right. students and so forth. Yeah. So the yuppies can both use it during the day and shop at night. And we can't do the opposite. Can't do the opposite. So we caught it on tape, the two-facedness, because you know, they don't want to tell the public. They don't want to tell themselves. They'll tell their employees the homelessness and their employees will have empty excuses like, well, I can't use it either. And it's like, well, you're just going to give up your right. And so real quick, let me end it on this. This is the best concept ever. It goes back to the cheese. Yeah. It's guilty until proven innocent is that uh, stupid cops will set up profiles that are not actual statutes. They'll be short of actual reasonable suspicion or probable cause. And, um, how do I put this? When you detain somebody, uh, cops usually find out pretty quickly that they've detained an innocent person and they use that information and they let them go. That may not be the place where they're supposed to be detained. They should be doing that on a level one, possibly. And so there's a shotgun approach where you detain everybody, 10 out of 10, guilty everybody, and then you let the one innocent person go. And uh, the, that never works because the innocent person might know their rights. They may not want to tell them that they're innocent. They might, just freedom of speech or, or, or silence, you know, a fifth minute. And so. But the Walmart receipt checking policy proves it because that it's a bad policy to do it that way because when I don't want to show my receipt, I should be looked at as an innocent person that you, you just simply need to go, their policy they even say is just go report their license plate and description. And so instead, everyone else is like, no man, come on, just show the receipt, show the receipt. So they're trying to ratify the showing of the receipt while I'm trying to say, no, I have a right to not and not be detained. Sorry, but I have a right to not be detained on that. You know, it's a backwards investigation, and if people, too many people are doing it, and we get profiled all the time. So all your guilty people, we get caught up in that crossfires of being, you know, detained and then released, detained and released. And we have like 30 of these tickets, so it's. So, but it's on, it's on YouTube. Seriously, all 30 of them, or at least 10 of them right now. I'm trying to get the rest of them up. It's. It's pretty bad. It, it, it's the guilty until proven innocent. You got you got to stop doing that.